Good morning. Welcome to the meeting for the Bucks County Commissioners, May 3rd, 2023. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we are uh, again as we usually do with presentations. A uh, few this meeting. Uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, um, and we do have a few. Representatives here from not only county, but also uh, NAMI here in Bucks County. And Commissioner Marcegli is going to read a proclamation. Thank you. It's my honor. It is my honor to read this. Whereas mental health is a part of our overall health and helps to sustain an individual's relationships and ability to live, learn, work, and adapt. And whereas mental illness may significantly interfere with those abilities and can be life-threatening in nature, and whereas one in five adults experiences mental health problems in any given year, and one in 20 adults lives with serious mental illness. And whereas early identification and treatment can make a profound difference in the successful management of mental illness and recovery. And whereas it is important to maintain mental health, invest in prevention efforts, and learn the symptoms of mental illness in order to get help when it's needed. And whereas every citizen and community can make a difference in helping end the stigma that surrounds mental illness with school-based education, recovery-focused support, and civic activities. So now, therefore, do we, the Bucks County Board of Commissioners, hereby proclaim May 2023 as Mental Health Awareness Month throughout the County of Bucks. And in so doing, we commend the work done every day by the employees of the Bucks County Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Programs, and their community partners, including NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We encourage residents of the county and beyond to in understand the importance of mental health. Okay, and we have a video here as well. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Diane Ellis Marsegli, a Bucks County Commissioner. But first and foremost, I am a social worker. And as a social worker, I want to thank all of the social workers that work for the County of Bucks for the hard work you do every single day. One of the reasons that I've been a social worker all these years is because there's so much variety of things that social workers can do within the human services field, whether it be for children and youth or working with seniors, working for drug and alcohol programs, mental health, disabilities. Not every family has the same life chances as every other family and children are the most vulnerable population that are out there, and that's who we serve. We often have baskets to donate at Christmas and Thanksgiving, and we have resources to help kids who don't have exactly what they need. For older adults, we make sure that individuals are safe in their home. We make sure that they have the services that they need to stay in their home. To live the end of their life, their last years, and as they're aging, to be as healthy and productive and stay in their homes as long as possible. This line of work is extremely important because we are usually the ones that are helping the individuals pick up the pieces after they've exhausted a lot of their resources. They may have lost employment, they may have lost housing, they may have lost family trust. We may be the first ones that have listened. We're those people that get to help them and lift them back up and get into their good space and we get to see that progress and it's, it's touching. We listen to people, listen to what they want for themselves and we really try to meet them where they are and to get where they want to go and that's what I love about social work. I have found working for Bucks County has been a good fit for me. I think there's a great group of people here and I think that all of us are very committed to making a positive difference in the lives of the children and families that we serve. Working with children is great. It's a very team-oriented environment. We work with each other. We always have each other's backs here. And we just all pitch in and work together and it's such a feeling of camaraderie and just positivity that I really couldn't imagine working anywhere else. I come to work every day and I do this job because I really do love helping people. I get satisfaction knowing that I actually help someone at the end of the day. 
I really salute social workers for all the work they do, for all the various populations that social workers work with, and in all the different ways that they're able to assist people in our county. Social work jobs exist in the court system where you can work with victims as well as offenders. There are social work jobs in the hub so that you can learn how to refer people for services. There are social work jobs that we call co-responders. They work with police responding to citizens who are having a mental health or other kind of emergency. In Bucks County, you can become a social worker in virtually any field. This is the place to start your career or finish your career. Okay, thank you. Um, as you could tell, we are looking, and I know Commissioner Marcego said this before, we are looking for social workers here, um, and I think it's great. Thank you for the people who do that work every day. And here for Mental Health Awareness Month, we have, I uh, believe, Donna Duffy Bell, oh, there you are. Donna Duffy Bell, Monica Stefanik, and Nami here. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners, for the opportunity to recognize Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, as we know and was read in the proclamation, mental health care and mental health really impacts us all, both as individuals and as a community. There really is no health care without mental health care. And foundational to that, as was also expressed in the proclamation, are the foundational principles of early identification, early intervention, and reducing the stigma around getting care. So with that focus in mind around early identification and early intervention and a focus on youth in our communities, I'd like to introduce Monica Stefanik from the Behavioral Health and Developmental, Developmental Programs um, Department. Monica is the Director of Children's Service System uh, in Bucks County, and Nick Amy, who is the Associate Executive Director of NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So thank you. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Amy, and I'm here with Monica today to talk about uh, the importance of mental health. And I today have the honor of serving as the Associate Executive Director of NAMI, and I'm really proud of that. Uh, there is, you know, with good reason, uh, you know, we could say that I wouldn't be alive today. Um, I live with a mental health condition called schizoaffective disorder, and um, I have been through the battle with mental illness, and I have attempted to take my life three different times, and the first time I thought about suicide was in second grade and I did not have the words to talk about it. I didn't have the way, any way to express it. And if we could go to the next slide, I will show you some of the programs that NAMI is focusing on. Um, if we take prevention uh, very seriously in the county, we'll end up spending less money on services and we will have a generation of youth that understands the importance of mental health. So what we have done is develop an elementary school program at NAMI called Small Talk that teaches elementary age students age appropriate ways to identify their feelings, thoughts, and emotions, talk to each other, and then help each other out. Um, that is necessary, we found, um, especially after going through a pandemic, the need for support in elementary schools as well. In middle and high schools, we have an early intervention education program called Ending the Silence that's in just about every school in Bucks County. Um, we talk about early identification, warnings, how to identify if someone is struggling with suicidal thoughts and then how to help them. Similar with Say It Out Loud, it's a presentation program where we also come back into the school and deliver eight to 10 weeks of support for the kids. Um, and that is in New Hope Solbury and it is in Bristol Borough. We also have a teen support group that we've partnered with Penn Foundation to provide support groups to um, individuals aged uh, 12 to 17 who really need the support of their peers and of the NAMI peer. And so I'm really excited about the things that we're doing to advance mental health and to work in prevention and early identification so that people do not have to go through the same things that I went through. And I didn't find recovery until I was 33 years old um, it's with the help of everyone in this room. I'd like to thank all of you for your commitment to mental health because otherwise 
I wouldn't be here today. And I also want to thank people like Katie Marseglia, who works in the Human Services Hub and is getting her master's degree. She's an inspiration to me. She's the future of mental health. So as we said in the beginning, we need lots of people to sign up and work in this field. Um, but the future of mental health is in these programs that we're delivering. So now I'll turn it over to Monica so she could speak about the county's programs. Thank you, Nick. We're so appreciative of our partnership with NAMI. We can go to the next slide. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you <clears throat> get close to the mic. Thank you. How's this? It's better. better. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, Monica Stefanik, I'm the Children's Service System Director for the Bucks County Department for Behavioral Health and Developmental Programs. Um, and I just want to highlight some of the efforts and initiatives that we have in terms of support models focused on early intervention, uh, identification, and intervention. Um, and some of these programs are county funded, some are Medicaid funded. Um, the asterisk indicates uh, Medicaid funded. And for more information, you could go to our website, um, buckscounty.gov, behavioral health, and get more um, detailed information related to what we have available. Um, but just want to highlight some services and supports. Um, we offer trainings, youth mental health first aid, uh, and question, persuade, and refer QPR. Uh, we offer that to schools and community members. We have the student assistance program where we fund behavioral health liaisons to work with school districts um, to identify youth that may need some mental health or drug and alcohol assessment support. Uh, School-based mental health outpatient and partial hospitalization programs are programs that are available in select school districts. Um, and, and the hope is to identify youth earlier, sooner, and provide um, the treatment services that they need uh, as soon as possible. Uh, respite programming, uh, we have an hourly program as well as an overnight program that's also available um, for youth that have mental health diagnoses to give themselves and their families a break. We uh, just recently launched the first episode psychosis program. Uh, it's called On My Way. Um, that's for youth and young adults 15 to 30 um, that have been identified as having their first psychotic episode within 18 months. We're also looking to do future planning with a provider around a trauma model called Attachment Regulation Competency. That's the ARC model. And that is going to be a partnership with a provider um, to, to work around more treatment-focused interventions. Okay. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you were done. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Obviously, it's, it's uh, as uh, you heard, there's a whole department here. Uh, focused on mental health behavioral uh, development and uh, developmental programs. So we thank all those people for all the work they do, the nonprofit partners for all the work they do, um, school districts, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, cer certainly something. It does take, uh, it's going to take the entire nation to start focusing on this issue, which it really hasn't done uh, ever. Uh, progress is made, definitely. Things are getting better but there's a way to go. So thank you for everything you do. And I think we have the, pre the proclamation up here. So if, uh, I don't know if you can bring whoever you want up here. Ooh, Donna, if you want to come up. Where's the, is there a seal down there? Charlotte, move to the front. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we are also marking an annual event uh, called Stamp Out Hunger, uh, which I will read the proclamation about. Whereas more than 38 million Americans, including 12 million children, live in households that struggle with food insecurity, lacking access to an affordable, nutritious diet. And whereas for 31 years, the National Association of Letter Carriers has conducted an annual nationwide food drive along postal routes throughout the United States. And whereas on the second Saturday in May, letter carriers from 10,000 cities and towns in all 50 states and the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Guam collect non-perishable food items at a very convenient spot, your mailbox. Whereas the Stamp Out Hunger food drive has grown to be the country's largest one-day food drive, having collected nearly 
billion pounds of food since 1993. And whereas timing is important, as food banks, pantries, and shelters are running low on donations from the winter holidays, as we approach summer when many school meal programs are suspended. Now, therefore, do we, the Board of Bucks County Commissioners, hereby recognize May 13th, 2023, as 31st Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive Day throughout the County of Bucks. In doing so, we commend the National Association of Letter Carriers for its effort to end food insecurity. We encourage all citizens in Bucks County and beyond to have a sturdy bag containing non-perishable food items next to your mailbox on May 13th to help stamp out hunger. Uh, obviously, this is the last meeting. It's not this coming Saturday, the Saturday after. Uh, so this is the last meeting before then, so we wanted to make sure that people were aware of this program, May 13th. And we do have Frank Powell, who's a letter carrier here from Marsville. Let's come on up and talk a little bit about uh, the program. Anything more he wants to add? Uh, thank you for Bucks County Commissioners for this honor. I've been uh, in charge the food drive coordinator in Marsville since 1996. I've been retired for 11 years, but I still feel it is important that this goes on. As myself, I'm afraid if I gave it up, it might not happen. So in 19067, we uh, we're averaging about 16,000 pounds a year up until 2017. Then affiliated with the AFL-CIO, they uh, donated bags to between Marsville, Levittown, and Langhorn, 60,000 bags, and we get 20,000 of that bags. And since that time, our average has gone up to 27,500 pounds. Before that, it was just postcards. So, and the, and the reason the post office does it at this time is because people only think that people are hungry during the holidays, Christmas and Thanksgiving. They do it this time of year because it helps get through this, the summer months. So that's what they do. And I, we support three in Marsville, the Interfaith Food Alliance, Holy Trinity, and First Presbyterian Church. So they get equally amount of food because we sort the food all that day and then it gets equally uh, separated to each of them organizations. So just thank everybody, if you please, just put out your bag. If you don't get a bag, put out your own bag or box, buy your mailbox on the street or at your house and it'll be picked up by letter carriers or volunteers that go out and help collect the food. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. And and definitely want to make sure our, our communications department, this is something we want to keep advertising for the next, you know, week and a half or so as, as May 13th is coming up. We can use social media to make sure people are aware of it. So appreciate all the effort you're putting in, especially now in your retirement and, uh, and for all the letter carriers out there and all the volunteers. So come on up and we'll give you this. Um, our final presentation today is to recognize uh, May um, as Asian American and Pacific Islanders Month, uh, and Commissioner DiGiralmo has a proclamation to read. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, just a, a brief comment on uh, the Stamp Out Hunger uh, Proclamation. And certainly very important, and uh, a lot of residents across Pennsylvania and here in Bucks County are in need or hungry and our need of hunger. And I, I, I think you need to also highlight the importance of the SNAP program here to Bucks County and the state of Pennsylvania. It, it's very important. Uh, it, it's how a lot of families and children get food that they desperately need. So I think we have to keep that in mind when ever there's bills or legislation that come up, whether in Harrisburg or in Washington that want to some, in some way cut back on that program. Uh, 
but it's, it's extremely critically important to many families here, not only here in Bucks County, but across Pennsylvania. So I just wanted to, so, to highlight that. And I have the honor today of presenting a proclamation that uh, recognizing May throughout the United States as Asian American and Pacific Island Heritage Month. And this is really, really important to me because I have, uh, as I've mentioned many times, two daughters from, uh, from Korea who are now 35, 36, and 40 years old. It is impossible to overstate the contributions to our community of those of Asian and Pacific Islander descent, many of whom are recognized in our regions as leaders in medicine, law, technology, education, business, and more. Bucks County is proud to be the home to tens of thousands of people who trace their roots to Asia and the Pacific Islands and whose languages, cultures, art, and religious belief enrich our communities. Thesis of Doylestown, a nonprofit organization for social change, created an inclusive environment in 2021 where South Asians and other Bucks County community members can feel welcome and supported regardless of race, gender, color, sexuality, and religion. People of Asian and Pacific Island origin are treasured friends, families, and neighbors here in Bucks County where we are committed to embracing and accepting residents of diverse background. Now, therefore, do we the board of the Bucks County Commissioners, Chair Robert Harvey, Vice Chair Diane Morseglia, and myself hereby proclaim the month of May 2023 to be Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month throughout the County of Bucks. In so doing, we commend Desis of Doylestown for engaging with the Bucks County community through education, advocacy, partnership, community gathering, and cultural events. We encourage all county residents to recognize the many vital contributions of the Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders who call Bucks County home and celebrate their rich history and cultures. Congratulations, and I believe we have, uh, we have a few people here, yes. Um, from uh, Desi of Doyletown, uh, Sophie Haldapur is here, and we also have from the governor's office, it's fun to say that now, the Council Rock graduate, uh, Razum Karu is here. So, come forward. Oh, and so, I'm sorry, I didn't see Pari here. <laughs> There's Pari as well. Sorry, Pari, I didn't see you there. <laughs> so, thank you so much, commissioners, for having us. Sorry. Can yeah. you guys hear me? Yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for having us and for our you know, dedicating the May as Asian American Pacific Islander Month. I believe Biden actually also added Native um, Hawaiian right. yeah. um, in between. So thank you so much for honoring us this month and for recognizing all the contributions Daisy's of Doyleson has brought forward. As you had mentioned, we started in November of 2021, um, and it's been a whirlwind. So I want to give you a little bit of an overview of who we are, what we've done, um, and for everyone that's listening here today to learn a little bit more about us. First and foremost, we're a nonprofit organization for social change. So if you don't mind moving on to the next slide. So how did it all begin? So this woman here next to me on the right, her name is Pari Pasi. She was a, she is still, a rising star at Central Bucks High School. And she petitioned Central Bucks to consider adding Diwali onto the school calendar. It was a long, arduous process. She presented, she went to all the meetings. She galvanized the community to come in support of this holiday. And after a lot of work and effort, Central Bucks recognized the holiday and the students and families were overjoyed. What was interesting to us as some of the family members that supported Pari down this journey was it's 2021. Many of us have family, friends, neighbors all, that actually know individuals that celebrate Diwali. But how is it that it was when we were in these meetings, people weren't aware? So what we decided to do was we said, you know what? Usually we celebrate these in our homes. What if we invite 40 people to Burpee Park and see who comes? 250 people showed up. It was amazing. It was the most joyous day. 
individuals came that were Desi, and Desi is South Asian origin, if you didn't know, with tears in their eyes. I finally don't feel alone. Non-South Asians came to the event and said, I am so glad you're here because now I don't have to travel far to expose my children to other culture. It was a joyous and a, a, you know, a tremendous, um, just a great moment. And essentially then what happened was we put up a sign-up sheet. 48 people joined. And we got together and we said, what do we want this to be? So if you don't mind going to the next slide, this is our vision. We want to create an equitable and inclusive environment in Bucks County where South Asians and all other community members, so not just South Asians, we want to be here as South Asians supporting others to feel welcome and supported regardless of race, gender, color, sexuality, and religion. And we do this by throwing these events, by getting involved with our community, by supporting our neighbors, supporting our colleagues, supporting each other. And we started in 2021, and if you go to the next slide, this is only a slice of what we've done. There's more that I, it's been a whirlwind of how much we've done, I can't even keep track. So not only did we get Diwali recognized on the Central Bucks school calendar, we got Eid recognized on the Council Rock school calendar. We helped 30 plus women in need of educational scholarships. We ran, if you look up this, Google it, there's things called the Sari Run internationally. The first ever Sari Run was held here in the United States, here in Doylestown. We've run seven cultural events. We established ourselves as a 501c3. We awarded two Changemaker scholarships, and we have over 200 plus members in a year and a half. It's amazing. So when I look at what we've really done, because I mean, yes, this is a lot of activity, what we've done, if you go to the next slide, um, I think there's a slide before. Oh, I guess it's not there. Or is there a slide after? Nope. nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what we really have done, and there was a slide of pictures, is we brought joy. We brought our community together. We brought um, opening hearts and minds and acceptance. I can't tell you the vibe that happens at these events. People are just like, they feel like we're one community and we're here for each other. So with that, what's next? We have Diwali coming up in November. We're working right now on those plans, so the location of where it's going to be and the exact date is still in the works. And that's it. That's all I have to share for, with everyone today. Okay, thank you. I don't know if there's image you want to say, okay. Thank you, commissioners. My name is Razin Karu, and I'm uh, newly appointed as the executive director of the Governance Commission on EAPI Affairs. A proud Bucks County resident uh, called Ben Salem, my home, and I'm a graduate of the Bucks County Community College. So I'm really glad that this is my first official presentation. <laughs> my boss, Josh Shapiro, <laughs> sent a proclamation to be given uh, to the AAPI community uh, in Bucks County. If I'm allowed, I may read it. Absolutely. Thank you. Whereas during this month, our Commonwealth recognizes the innumerable contributions, vibrant cultures, and rich heritage of Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders, and whereas the AA and NHPI community constitutes a vital dimension of the Commonwealth's diverse ethnic and social fabric whose languages, cultures, and religious beliefs have enriched communities in all parts of the state, and whereas to Though AAPI and NHPI's love of family, community, and hard work, they have helped to uphold the founding principles of our Commonwealth for generations. This community strengthens our economy, and their dedication and ingenuity inspires the next generation of American innovation by example. And whereas Pennsylvania, through dialogue with representatives from all major AA and NHPI communities, continues to address the needs and concerns of its citizens and remains committed to a proactive stance that seeks solutions to problems such as prejudice, discrimination, and violence. Therefore, I, Josh Shapiro, Governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, do hereby proclaim May 2023 to be Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah.
Congratulations uh, on the proclamation. And uh, I, I, I live in Ben Salem, and uh, there's a very large Indian Asian population that live in Ben Salem, and I, I really all throughout Bucks County. And I was a uh, state rep for 25 years, and I attended many, many, many events at the Hindu temple. And now whenever I go, anywhere to an Indian Asian event, they all call me Gene Patel. So that's my, <laughs> that's my uh, official name now in the Indian Asian community, Gene Patel. So thank you very much for being here, and again, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I believe, I probably should have looked this up beforehand, I believe after the 2020 census, um, Asian Americans were the largest minority group in Bucks County. Um, so, and that covers obviously you know, Asia's the biggest continent, so we're covering a large, large variety of, of people and nationality, so we're thrilled to have them here. Um, all right, moving on to public comments for agenda items. <clears throat> Before we start, one, as a change, item 14. <clears throat> so item 14 is for the law library, <clears throat> two different items, A and B. Um, these are uh, basically um, purchases for access through the West uh, uh, Thomas Reuters, uh, basically to allow online access to online libraries. The A is basically they should be reversed. So A should be approved contract to provide public access. B should be approved contract to provide library staff access. So the library staff access, obviously much smaller number of people, it's a, should be, it's a smaller amount. Public access, larger number of people, should be larger amount. So just reversing those two. Okay. So a reminder, agenda items, uh, or agenda comment is on agenda items themselves. Uh, ask speakers to keep their comments focused on some kind of agenda item that's on the board, uh, on this today. Um, first commenter is Scott Bogan. Scott Vogan, Warrington Township. I see you have an agenda item for um, family services. I know they also provide psychotherapy services, and I've been, in my advocacy, hearing a lot of complaints from them and NAMI that they are refusing treatment for Bucks County residents. If you guys are going to give them money, you need to make sure that there are clauses in the uh, grants or whatever you're giving them, that they cannot be refusing Bucks County residents without good cause. Both organizations are refusing Bucks County residents. And NAMI's, I hear more complaints about NAMI than I know what to do with. Um, I'd say NAMI should be shut down because they're kicking people out just because they don't like them. That's the complaints I get. And like I said, some of us really need the services. We really need the support. And they get turned around, oh, we just don't want you, or we don't want your case, or something like this, or yada, yada, yada. Um, and it's just, it's a ridiculous reason, and I don't think taxpayer money should be going to an organization that's gonna tell taxpayers we don't want you. Uh, as a question on this uh, Board of Elections thing, the um, I know they had problems with the, some minor problems, because when they first put the uh, poll books online, certain things weren't working, like the spoiled ballot system. Is this to upgrade the software to make sure that the uh, systems are online correctly and that feature will work? Or what will that entail? Or is this just because with the cost of living, everything went up and the contract went up? So that's, because these poll books, I still think they're okay, they're good. I like them um, as a judge of elections. They made the line move faster and they prevent what happened when we, when. Uh, when our constable in my ward was telling my staff to override me and Tom Fry tags what's going on down there. But I just think that the, um, I'd like to know why this is a bit, what's this about there. And I think if anything, we might need even more poll books down in the wards, uh, cause it's a lot, it made the lines go faster. 
and I think that was a good thing, as I said before. I was pleasantly surprised, but I know there's a lot of flaws with them. And I want to make sure also that the polling data is going to be tested better, and I hope this increase with the funding will allow for the polling data, not polling, the voter data to be tested and proper, so we're even making less calls to the Board of Elections on Election Day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ed Madhouse. Ed Madhouse from Buckingham, former teacher, scientist, engineer. <clears throat> I'd like to compliment what you're doing with mental health, stamping out hunger, these programs, Asian American. It's very nice. My children went to Central Bucks East, and we attended a lot of events by the Asian Americans, great entertainment events, social events for everybody. And comments on, for the children, the mental health. Uh, I, I don't have any complaints about any of these activities, mental health, and for the children, these programs. Sounds good, and I'm sure they're good. And money for mental treatment and stuff. I think that um, drugs and stuff are a quick way of addressing problems. I think that psychological communications, everyone has problems. So the question is why some people's, like she said, one out of five or 20, one out of 20, serious mental problems. Everyone has conflict with other people. So the schools and education should be to resolve problems, learn how to communicate. So I think, and there's information here, there's a lot more information, in, and, and we want to be positive. People don't like to be told what to do or to be questions. So there can be suspicions. So I think that all the, like the courts asked for the right to know all those things to be released. And I think, and then the court said that for Megan, that all the court, all the legal bills should be paid. So it's the responsibility for the commissioners individually if a thing was criminal. If it's not criminal, it's part of your duties and it's questioning, then the liability is on the Bucks County Commission as a whole. So it's better to prevent problems. Mr. Mackhouse, I'm sorry, you're, you're asked, you signed up to speak on items 7A and 8A? Yeah, these items involve mental health and treatment. So dealing with mental health and treatment, we want to yeah, deal that, They actually don't Also, I want to know the statistics. Health? How many people are they actually dealing with? And like how much, how many people apply for these benefits and help? So I'd like to know statistics from these organizations for, and methods, like I'm a scientist, I like numbers. So like okay. how much, how many, like are, are they dealing with a lot of illegal immigrants? How much, how Sir? much is this good for Buck County? Okay. So I'm not here to criticize, I'm here to find out ways to make things right. better so we don't have so many suspicions and so conflict and just, people believing it's for political purposes yes. and not for the benefit of all the people in the community. Right. Okay, so thank you. Just, uh, just for clarity, the questions, I guess I'm assuming, are the questions about corrections and the medical assistance treatment program, which I can, I'll, it's something, you know. Yeah, all right, okay. All right, that's what you're asking about, okay. Okay. Um, Christine Heitman. Four B fourteen. I'm wondering. Will this law library be available to the general public? I can see Megan Brock filing a right to know request. I can also see the county illegally denying her the transparency that she has the right to know. Will she be able to go to the library and have access to this information or is it only for county employees? Agenda 4B4A. 
We're spending another 7,500 in addition to the, the $5 million that we already spent. These poll books are supposed to improve things. I spent half of the 22 general election at a poll that had about 1,800 voters. Of those 1,800 voters, 20 were not found in the electronic poll books. The county explains that they were loaded by the previous, the previous database and all these voters were new registrations. Most were, but some were not. One man in particular had been voting at that precinct for years. His wife showed up in the poll book, but he didn't. Can you please explain this? In recent weeks, I've heard you, Robert, say that the voter rolls are clean. And also, Tom Freitag said the same thing. I got really excited when I heard this. Does this mean that the issues that we have shown you have been resolved? I'm involved in a court case against the Board of Elections. In January, we provided you with a list of 150 voters who voted in the 22 general election. We knocked on these 150 doors, and the current resident verified that that voter doesn't live here. What about the 15,000 people who are registered in the NCOA database as not living in this county? Have you guys taken this list we provided you and done anything with it? We provided you with a list of people who have been out of our county for more than two years. Have you done anything with it? What about the 1,000 or so mail and ballots reported by the county as being mailed out after they were received? Has the county done any investigation? If so, what did you find? It's my understanding that the voter roll maintenance law lays out a procedure that the county must follow in order to remove voters. The law doesn't say that the county cannot remove them. It just says that they have to give that voter a chance to prove they should not be removed. Thank you. Robert McLean. I would like to congratulate uh, uh, Controller Van Blunk. I'm looking for is Controller Van Blunk. No, she's not here, but I would like to congratulate Controller Van Blunk on her receiving the, uh, in her capacity, receiving the Excellence in Financial Reporting Award. I also would like to, uh, as I was reminded uh, when I looked at the mental health video that you had, uh, how effective the agency on aging was uh, for my family when we removed my mother-in-law from a nursing home during COVID and, and brought her home with us. And so I wanted to recognize the effectiveness of the uh, Agency on Aging. 12% of your revenue uh, comes from state and federal emergency rental assistance and the American Rescue Plan grants. Are there any of these funds to be returned from 2022? That's one question. And the next thing is you have become dependent on these grants. How will you adjust once they are not available? I have asked numerous times in these meetings for information on various financial matters. In March, I requested access to the American Rescue Plan and the Emergency Rental Assistance Grant Agreements. I have heard nothing from the county regarding how to do that. Uh, I am directing this question to the county's legal counsel. May I inspect the grant agreements at the county offices upon request? If not, must I go through the FOIA protocol? Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Elizabeth Yaus. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Yaus from Northampton Township. At the last meet, oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking about um, 4A. Um, it's an a, a con a approved contract increase to provide additional on-site support for electronic poll books. So I was wondering what support will that be? Um, is that on election day? Or, and where will that support happen? Uh, and at the last meeting, I asked you, Mr. Harvey, about cleaning up the voter rolls. Your response was, we followed Pennsylvania law. Could you please tell me the name of the law or laws that the Board of Elections follows with regard to making sure that people who have moved or died are removed from the voter rolls? Also, what is the process that the Board of Elections goes through when a citizen comes to you with documented issues within the voter rolls? Who follows up and do you have a timeline in which you must respond and take action or remove someone from the voter rolls? I have some questions about the mail-in ballots. Um, where are they stored? Who opens up the mail-in ballots? When do they start opening the ballots? And um, as far as the mail-in ballots, um, for either the primary or the general election, on, outs on the outside, on either the inside security envelope or the outside envelope, is there any marking or information within the barcode or somewhere else um, that shows that the voter is a Democrat or a Republican? Um, I still think that the commissioners should not be on the Board of Elections because for one year out of the four, you have to find other people to fill the seats on the board, and this affects the continuity of the operations of how the board is run. And I think it's very clear that there are a lot of people in Bucks County who want clean elections, therefore we are asking important questions and we appreciate the transparency that the Bucks County voters deserve. Thank you. That's Curcio. My name is Beth Curcio from Warminster, Pennsylvania. I wanted to go under um, 5A um, with the children and the, and the mental illness and all. My concern with all this is the children are ours. And over the years, the government just keeps doing more and more and taking more of our tax money to do things with children that should be in the home. Yes, there are exceptions to the rule where there are children that need help. And years ago, the churches, the ministers, the priests helped those. But the government has stepped in so big that they are actually playing with the minds. I listened to some of these programs. What are they telling these two-year-olds, these three-year-olds? I have grandchildren. They have wonderful parents. And I don't think schools should ever step in to anything that has to do with feelings or anything else, and we all know this is going on. These are the parents' children, not like Hillary Clinton said, it takes a village to raise the child. Two parents, we should be supporting the families, giving them more tax deductions for the children they have instead of stepping in. So this really scares me because now we've got two rainbow rooms, which just because it's a grant doesn't mean it's not tax money, people. $620,000. We could be using these for great programs of Bible studies and maybe you know going to the Franklin Institute, all different kinds of things. But instead, we're using it for drag queens and shows and trans things. How, why would we want to even confuse children? Have them live in fear. Look what you did with the masks and everything else. I listened to somebody's grandchild. They were scared to death to go out of the house so they got vaccinated. This is a six-year-old. They should never live in fear. My friend is from communist Russia. She said, you know, during those times, their parents 
shielded them from communism. They didn't know what was going on. They kept them children, and that's our problem. We're not keeping them children. The next one I wanted to talk about is the Verizon. Um, okay, we got information technologies. What kind of towers are these? Are these 5G towers, LED lights, which we see a lot of more LED lights are going up. 5G towers went up when we were on lockdown. Who's paying for these? What counties and locations are they going into? They throw off a lot of bad things, okay? Your symptoms from all this radiation. This is radiation, so if you decide to drive an electric car, it's like you're in a microwave. So you guys must, you may laugh at this and you say you've, you've done research, but you haven't done research. You brought somebody in with 5G, I, I wanted to talk to him, he skipped out and made sure I didn't talk to him. This causes insomnia, fatigue, head, head, headaches, dizziness, difficulty thinking, eye problems, heart problems, fertility problems, blood pressure problems. You don't need to be doing that. Thank you. Andy Warren. Morning, commissioners. <clears throat> um, I have four questions. Item 1A, uh, what's the source of the $40,000? I understand what it says it's going to do, but if it's not county money, what is it? Um, item 4A, <clears throat> uh, are, are these additional is that going to be an additional person? Is it going to be additional machinery? What is the additional support? Um, item 13, A and B, it's going to connect locations which I assume are not connected today. If that's the case, What's the communication? 14. Where are these locations? What are these locations? And um, the last question that I had was um, item number, right, I skipped it, uh, uh, 3B. Is 3B a location? Is it a place? Um, is it an office? I assume HVAC is air conditioning, but what it describes, children's partial hospitalization program, uh, just what is that? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um. Lori Katz. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my question is 4A. I thought that the e-poll books would be saving us money. Can you please tell us how much the county has spent to date with this e-poll book venture? Uh, what is the cost differential versus paper ballots? Can you please share that? I'm sure that you investigated that. I understand the desire to latch onto technology. However, it's not always better. In my district, there were two write-in votes in November election cycle for Alex Enton that did not show up on the tabulation report. That's very concerning. Attempts to access the paper ballot and verify the counts have been blocked by the Board of Elections in the court. Transparency generates trust. Hopefully these e-poll books are as secure as promised. I have concerns. 7A, I'm not sure what the county jail-based medication assistant, assisted treatment encompasses. Uh, does that include hormone therapy for transgender males housed in women's facilities in Bucks County. I also never got an answer last time to how many gender males are housed in our female facilities. 
I wonder if the women there have a voice and are being considered as well. Do they check in with the women and see how the integration is working or not working for them? Please address this. 12I, please explain the acronyms and what the $3.6 million will be allocated for and who decides this. Thank you. Lana Darmond. Good morning, Lana Darmond, Plumstead. Um, I had a question about number 11 on the agenda. The health department, and I'm just wondering what what it's used for when it says um, public health workforce grant. What is that money going to be used for? And uh, I also have a question on the meeting minutes. So I brought this up before. You're in violation of the Sun Sunshine Act because you you you're going to vote on these draft minutes, but you won't post the draft minutes. So when I went to the agenda and I'm looking to see what's in the minutes. I am not being given, and no one else is being given, the opportunity to comment, to say, to have a question about. And I recently uh, had that opportunity at the Doylestown uh, Borough Council meeting where they had a mistake on their meeting minutes. And I pointed it out to them, and they took the, the minutes off so that they could correct those and then come back the next meeting to, to approve them. So uh, I, I think that's concerning, and I want you to please look into that. Um, one of the other things I feel that you're in violation with with the Sunshine Act is that you changed your public commenting procedure without having a policy that you voted on publicly. We did not, the public did not have an opportunity to make any kind of um, comments about that. It used to be we come here, uh, Diane, you know, Bobby used to say, hey, uh, anybody want to comment on this? It was, it was a little less formal. I understand the need sometimes for formal procedures and policies, but it's, it's, it wasn't done considering our input, and I feel that you're preventing free speech because of this, because even if somebody wants to come and speak at the end of the meeting, you're forcing them to come here and they must sign in before this public comment session starts. I, starts. That doesn't make sense to me. People work during the day. Maybe they can only take off a certain amount of time. If you really want to be transparent and hear from the public, I think a good show of faith would be to, to change that, that procedure and to make it uh, put on the agenda so we can comment on it. Uh, one other thing about the, um, the t today's presentations, the AAPI month, um, that was neat to see that on here. Uh, I was, I've been to all those board meetings where uh, Pari spoke and I learned about Diwali through, through what she did, so I think it's fantastic. I think we need to have lots of diversity. Um, and uh, what's really neat is that we have an, um, uh, Asian American and uh, Arthi Martino, who's running for school board. So that's pretty cool. And I encourage anybody, she's a really neat lady. Her parents are immigrants and her story is really cool. So I encourage anybody to talk to her and find out about her background. Thank you. Okay. All right, those are all the names under the agenda. Just to go back over some of the things, I do see that Tom Freitag is your director of board of elections. There's quite a few questions about the e poll books. Um, so I'll ask him to address some of these if he doesn't mind. One of the things I'll say beforehand, this um, um, e-poll books are used all over the country. Uh, in fact, in predominantly Republican areas, quite frankly, I think most of Texas uses them. Um, in fact, the specific model, I think, that we use is used in, um, I think, Wyoming or, or states that are overwhelmingly Republican. Uh, so, you know, I know that common theme of a lot of the speakers, um, not just poll books, but political affiliation, I think is uh, something to note. Um, but in terms of, um, just in terms, you know, I want to talk, Mr. Freitag, about what's the process for removing people's names if uh, they have been a, uh, a voter, hasn't, haven't voted in a while, um, what that process is like. There's a question specifically about the law and what the law says about how you remove somebody off the rolls. Sure. Uh, good morning. Uh, so to answer your first questions on the poll pads, um, 
and we know there are a lot of questions on what the 7500 was for for this. So this is for three days of on-site support when we're actually loading the pull pad. So this will be next week, next uh, Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday before the pull pads get loaded up and sent out to the judges of elections over that weekend. Uh, that's what, I'm sorry, I'm tall. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, other questions on um, voter list maintenance. Uh, so that's covered under the Pennsylvania Election Code, Title 25, uh, CSA 1901, and it gives specific reasons of how we can cancel a voter registration, uh, for what reasons. Uh, we send out letters throughout the year. Uh, we do two main mailings, our five-year notice, which we do in the beginning of the year, and then we do a... Um, our chain, national change of address mailing uh, during the summer. So the first mailing is for somebody, if they have not voted in five years and have not made any changes to their record at all, they haven't updated their address, their registration, their party, things like that, we send them a letter basically asking, hey, do you still live at this address? Is your information still correct? And this is a forwardable letter, so it will get forwarded by the post office if they've changed their address. If we get a response, that they still live there, they're completely still active. If we get a response saying that they've moved, we'll cancel the registration. If we get no response, they get put as inactive. And an active voter, when they go to the polling place, has to fill out an affirmation. It's the form verifying that all of their information is still correct. So that's how that five-year notice works. If they don't vote, continue to, while they're inactive, continue to not vote for two federal election cycles, which is another four years, then they will be canceled. The national change of address mailing that we do during the summer, similar to this, if we send it out and we get it back, we'll update what it says. If we get no response, we'll put them as inactive. And then if they are inactive for two federal elections, they'll be canceled. Uh, the NCOA comes from primarily the post office, but we also get stuff from different uh, organizations like other Department of Transportation throughout the country uh, that the Department of State has um, agreements with for, for information and will send to that address and also forwardable mail uh, so that we can see if the person is actually registered there. So it is a very long process, but that's what the law entails for us to cancel a voter. Okay, thank you. Um, regarding the poll books themselves in terms of your staff now using them in November, getting ready to use them again, um, and I appreciate your staff's involvement in sort of taking a look and choosing them, and we piloted them in, I think, three or four different precincts? Yes, in 2021. Okay. What's been the feedback, I guess, so far now that you're, you're leading up to this election compared to this time last year with paper poll books? What's, what's the general feeling of your staff? Primarily, we've gotten positive feedback from um, election workers. Uh, there we have had some suggestions that we've taken into account in our trainings that we've been doing. Uh, we have had some people where they weren't able to find somebody who was actually registered. Uh, we've given them a little bit of updated uh, information on how to look people up. Sometimes less information is more. If you can't find a voter by looking up their full name, try just their first initial. Sometimes somebody might be registered instead of Thomas Freitag as T Freitag, uh, and they couldn't find them by putting their full name in. Uh, so we've uh, told them basically a uh, rule of three to first try out, try f searching the first three letters of the first name and last name. If you still can't find them, narrow that down a little bit, maybe just try the first initial of the first name and a couple of the last name uh, so that you can find that. Uh, it's been very helpful also to um, help people get to the correct polling place. Uh, if somebody goes to the wrong polling place, they will be still listed in the poll book, but unable to be processed on it. Uh, but if you click into their name, it'll give you the name and address of the facility where they need to go. Uh, so that's been helpful. Um, there was a slight issue during November with the first rollout where we rely on the Department of State to help us with this process. Um, we use the state shore system uh, to create the voter listing that goes either into a paper poll book or an electronic poll book, the same system. Uh, we did a uh, initial um, poll book export uh, to create our paper poll books as emergency backups because uh, they have to get printed a little bit further in advance because of the time constraints. Uh, and then we did a secondary backup that was supposed to go onto the poll pads uh, that had any last minute changes 
uh, because the state has changed all of its voter registration deadlines in the past few years. Previously, it was 30 days before an election, which gave us plenty of time to get poll books printed and updated. Now it's 15 days before an election, while people can still apply for absentee and mail-ins up to seven days before an election. So we have a lot of a time crunch, which was one of the main reasons we wanted electronic poll books, so that we could have everything as up-to-date in them. Uh, when we use the SURE system, we use them as basically a middleman so that we do the export and then SURE will send that export to NoInc, the uh, provider of the poll pads, and then they will put that onto the system. Uh, our first upload went onto it and when we sent our second one, they accidentally just sent the first one again and it didn't get those last few days of registrations that had to be updated. So that was the issue while some people, especially, and it was a shame, it was a lot of people that had just turned 18, we run a uh, update, date, uh, update utility. Anybody that's registered but wasn't 18 yet, but will be 18 by election day, we do that at the very end, uh, which updates their registration to make them active. So it was a shame a lot of them went to the polls and had to do a provisional for the first time voting, but this is one of the reasons we are having no ink on site to help us and make sure that there are no issues this election. Okay, appreciate that. All right, any other questions for Mr. Freitag? No? All right, thank you, Mr. Freitag, appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> um, just there was a generic uh, question about how ballots are processed when they come in. <clears throat> the first step in the process, ballots that come in, uh, there are barcodes on the outside to identify who that um, voter is. It does not identify anything about their party. Um, the machine that we use does sort by precinct, first municipality then by precinct. Uh, and so then those, all those envelopes that return are placed basically in bins um, and left uh, as other ballots come in, whether through drop boxes or the mail. Uh, the same process is done over and over and over again uh, until, you know, even through election day, actually, because the drop boxes on election day, of course, are closed at 8 p.m. and then they have to be transported here. Um, the um, Ballots cannot be opened until election day, 7 a.m. That is a state law. Uh, we are, I think, the only state in the country that has mail-in ballots that does not allow pre-canvassing. There is some movement in Harrisburg to change that. Um, all three of us have been very vocal about the need for that. Um, county commissioners across the Commonwealth have been very vocal about the need for that. Um, and so uh, we're hoping there's some movement there that would help our staff not have to work you know, 40 hours in a row starting 7 a.m. Uh, on election day so that they can get everything processed quickly and efficiently. Um, and so, um, but that process begins 7 a.m. and runs until it's done, basically. So, um, <clears throat> other questions, a few things about the MAT program. Mr. Kratz, did you want to <clears throat> just touch on that <clears throat> in terms of what exactly MAT is and roughly an idea of how many people we have coming in who need detox and how many are on MAT? Sure. Absolutely, so uh, MAT program um, is our medication assisted treatment program for MOUD, which is medications for opioid use disorder, which is a diagnosed disorder. Um, it affects the, you know, opioid use over a long time affects the brain, cognitive thinking. Uh, there are currently five, I believe, medications that are approved by the FDA um, that are used um, in, in conjunction with counseling and therapy. Um, they're used for two purposes. The first would be detox, obviously the detoxes um, getting people over that hump, and then there's continuation and treatment that goes from incarceration in the community. Um, we're, we're probably using between 100 and 180 people a month in the jail are receiving some type of MAT for both of those, um, those features. Um, I think that was... <clears throat> there was a, a question, too, about um, anybody, <clears throat> anybody who's transgender who may be in the women's facility? So, so MAT, uh, yeah, and that was the other piece. MAT does not have anything to do with, with transgender. It's strictly for the opioid use disorder. Um, the question on, on transgender, I did go back and look after the last uh, meeting. We, we get possibly through Bucks County, I don't know, four to six a year folks come in. And you have to remember we're a short-term facility. So um, we did not have anybody I believe the last time I was asked at the last commissioner's meeting, we did have one person that identified as transgender, has since been admitted and released. Um, so it does kind of cycle through with us, but uh, you know, off the top of my head, I'd say somewhere between four and six, four and eight uh, folks come through. But again, we're a short-term facility. A lot of these folks come in on new crimes with low bails or probation violations, um, like that. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. 
Um, let's see, that was out of MET, MET. Okay. Uh, question about the law library access to the public. It literally says in, um, on the agenda that it is uh, one of the items, in fact, I made mention of the fact that it was a correction, 14A, approved contract to provide public access. So that answers that question. Um, in terms of BERA and ARPA, um, the ARPA budget, in terms of how the money is coming in and how it's spent, um, Ms. McKevitt, you want to talk about a little bit of that? Access to both of those programs is online, but if you'd like to, uh, if you don't have access to the internet, you can call our office and we can make and uh, set up an appointment for you to look at, look at the data um, on hard copy. Uh, the American Rescue Act plan is right on the front page and is accessible to the, on the left menu. The BARA program is accessible through the Housing and Community Development link. Okay. Thank you. Um, in terms of a couple comments or questions about the IT items, uh, item 14. Um, Mr. Regula, do you just want to touch on exactly what it is that we're doing at those sites, where they are roughly, and you have to go to all 31 of them? Thank you. These uh, 31 sites encompass uh, all areas of the county, um, government services building, court buildings, and, and similar county-owned uh, or lease facilities that require county staff to be there. These services are provided by a terrestrial-based uh, connectivity standards that is uh, fiber, Copper lines do not involve um, the use of uh, Wi-Fi or over-the-air signals to do this connectivity. Thank you. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. And these are really just extensions of existing contracts, correct? Yes, that, that, that's, that's correct. We are on a month-to-month -month extension for our contracts because we are currently having RFP in the field to uh, ensure that the uh, best value is received by Bucks County for services rendered. So we're shopping for all services right now. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Warren asked about item one, the agriculture preservation. To uh, This is for digitally scanning all the old agricultural and open space files. That is coming through the Records Improvement Committee. Um, those are funds that are brought in through the various rural offices where officers meet together periodically um, you know, so that these funds can be distributed um, now I know the DA has used them for digitizing things. I know other row officers have been used them for different things. Um, I'm not sure if that existed when you were a commissioner. I don't actually know when it started, so, yep, okay. Um, there was, let's see, 3B. Yeah, the intermediate unit, this is Joey. Uh, they're kind of renovating a facility in Bucks County. Um, there, this was originally a program that was gonna be at one spot, but it, it kind of grew a little large, so they had to move to a different spot uh, for this program for, for children here. Um, let's see, 12 I. <clears throat> Ms. McKevitt, you wanna to touch on just 12 I in terms of what exactly the, that $3.6 million in revenue is about? Certainly. Uh, this, these programs are the community development block grant money, money funds. Uh, that is one of the programs. That's two, a little over $2.1 million. Home is $1.3 million, and emergency solutions grant is a little less than uh, $190,000. And these programs are open to uh, entities throughout the county. It is an open process. It's followed, it's, the regulations are um, through the Department of Housing and Urban Development, U.S. Housing and Urban Development. Uh, the county commissioners review that, well, uh, the Housing and Community Development Department uh, accepts applications, and then um, a methodology is applied in accordance with the governance of housing, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, and then the projects are submitted to the county commissioners. They are ranked and uh, then they are approved and submitted through agenda for approval at each of the commissioner's meetings. This is done at annually, basically. We get allotment right. every year. Correct. In fact, I know just um, 
last meeting, I believe there was a $75,000 CDBG grant that went to Bristol Borough for a park that they're working on. Um, we've, uh, there's been money that's gone to, um, I think Pendell Borough got money for one of their parks as well. Um, there's gone money to different nonprofits. Uh, right, but mostly, we, mostly, mostly nonprofits, most, almost all of them are nonprofits right. or municipalities. Right. 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 Yeah. So, uh, community development block grants is CDBG, mm -hmm. uh, is the acronym. Um, let's see. In terms of the, that was on this page. Okay. In terms of the, the health department, the grant the health department's getting, Dr. Damsker, you just want to touch on what it is uh, that money's going to be used for? Yes, sir, Commissioner. Um, it's a federal grant for public health infrastructure that was passed to the state, and they divided it throughout all health departments in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, we're going to use it. It's a five-year grant. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of it. We're going to update our environmental health inspection system that we've had since 2008. Um, we're going to scan in all of our microfilm that's, that's decades old that started, that's fading away. We're getting all that scanned in so we have a permanent record. We're going to utilize it for a new epidemiology uh, data manager, which is actually on the agenda today. And we're going to utilize it to help pay for current staffing that's existing. And it's a, it's a the first grant we've ever had that was sort of, um, you know, dedicated just for public health and on, you know, uh, to help keep our infrastructure going. Um, after all that's happened over the last three years, so we're excited to have it. Okay. And what exactly is the environmental health inspections? Process. What's that that you're talking about? Yeah, we currently have uh, T Tyler Data Systems. Uh, it, it was the digital health department, um, and it, it does all of our restaurant inspections, all of our sewage, pools, schools. Um, we're, we were actually the first health department, as far as I know, in the country to go to a full tablet-based inspections with, you know, four, at the time, maybe it was 3G, um, inspections in the field, um, and we're excited, but the software is getting to a point where it needs to be upgraded so we can do more things. Um, and we're excited about uh, going through that process now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, question about the minutes. Uh, minutes are not approved until they're approved. Um, certainly, once the minutes are approved, they're posted. Um, if someone happens to notice mistakes in minutes and brings them to our attention, certainly we can correct them afterwards. Um, it's, not, it's a pretty standard process. So... Um, and I think the last thing just to comment on, it takes a village to raise a child is actually an African proverb. It's a, probably several hundred years old as a state, as a common, as a proverb, so. Um, all right, so those are all the comments and agenda items. All right. Moving on with consent agenda. Minutes from April 19th, 2023. Any comments, corrections, suggestions regarding the minutes? Hearing none. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolutions <clears throat> noting the correction on 14A and 14B. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items 1 through 18B? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, regular agenda. We have budget adjustment. Mr. Boscola. Thank you, Commissioner, um, for your consideration. Uh, adjustment number 50 for uh, calendar year 2022 is um, for emergency communications. Um, it will be able to recognize additional revenue for the year uh, under emergency, communi emergency communica communications, and it will allow um, reallocation of the funds within the department to cover uh, a capital improvement that was made um, in, de in December. Okay. How much questions regarding the budget adjustment? Oh. Is there a motion to approve a budget adjustment number 50? So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the personnel actions. This is the commissioner's list only. Any comments or corrections for, for the commissioner's list of personnel actions? No. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the personnel actions commissioner's list? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Other six? Um, Contribution $1,000 to the Andalusia Historic House Garden and Arboretum, $1,000 to the Lee um, Letterman Foundation, Lecker, excuse me, Letterman Foundation, um, $2,800 to SCORE, and $2,000 to the Tile Works of Bucks County. Is there a motion to approve those contributions? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Chief, 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 Chief Operating Officer, Ms. McKevitt. 
Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, just to want to make mention that the Household Hazardous Waste Program uh, collection program is May 13th at the Upper Bucks Area Vocational Technical High School. That's on uh, Ridge Road in Perkesee, Bedminster Township. Uh, you don't need to register, uh, and if you need to, to determine which items are eligible to bring to this event, please visit our website. And also, May, Wednesday, May 10th is Prevention Day, uh, added on to Prevention Day, and this will be held out here in the administration building from 11 to 2, is uh, law enforcement recognition for their help and assistance in the uh, uh, collection of uh, Take Back Day. So they will be here, the commissioners will be on hand uh, during that event. And then also, in keeping with our theme to, to educate uh, the public on countywide projects, I was gonna ask if Bernard Griggs could join us at the podium to talk about Love is the Answer mural projects throughout the county. And Randy, if you could pull up the slides. Good morning. Thank you, commissioners. Um, thank you for giving me a minute here this morning to talk about the Love is the Answer mural project that has been an ongoing project and program here for the last couple of years. Um, the Walking While Black Love is the Answer movie and program was created by the actor and writer A.J. Ali as part and is part and parcel of our diversity and inclusion initiative here at the County of Bucks. The program was created to help bridge the gap between law enforcement and the community by watching a one hour film uh, about real life events and situations that happen in communities of color. People watch the movie, then they get together afterwards to have group discussions and talk about how the movie made them feel. And in those discussions, it really opens up a dialogue of folks looking at things from a different perspective and really creates an understanding um, of what issues can be between communities of color and law enforcement, and most importantly, how the community and law enforcement can work together. And so the county commissioners and the Office of Diversity and Inclusion made the Walk and Walk Black Love is the Answer program and film available to county staff um, countywide to watch in October of 2020. The Bucks County Peace Center helped facilitate the group conversations and close to 1,600 staff participated in that program. And the feedback that we got from folks that participated uh, in the program was very positive. And so moving forward, part and parcel of the, the film portion of the program is a mural project where AJ Ali was inclined to work harder to bring the community and the law enforcement together and was so inspired by doing so with the relationship that he had his with his brother that he um, proclaimed September 17th to be Love is the Answer uh, World Mural Day. And so part of the Walk and Walk Black Love is the Answer program is the mural day that occurs each year on the 17th of September. And this is where communities across the country get together with law enforcement, elected officials, um, and others to paint a mural in a highly visible area. Um, the mural is usually designed by somebody uh, in the group that is a, a mural artist of some kind or has artistic skills. Um, and the mural must include um, and spell out the word love and the love pledge, which is learn about the people in my community, open my hearts to their needs, volunteer to be part of the solution in their life, and empower everyone I meet to do the same. And so when you look at the first slide that's up there, which was actually the first mural that we painted um, as part of this program, that is, you're actually looking at the Pennsylvania side of the bridge abutment of the Trenton Morrisville Bridge. And um, wow, was that a cool program. We had law enforcement from the Morrisville Borough Police Department out elected officials, local, county, um, state, and federal level, and um, it was really a great day, and is a mural that will live on for quite some time. Um, next slide, please. 
second mural you see there, and that is the majority of the group that participated in it, um, was at the Falls Community Park. That was done just last year, and was even better than the first one that we did. Um, so it, it seems to be that we're on a trend of getting better and better at this each time that we do one, with the coordination all the way down to um, the final completion of the uh, mural itself. And so this year, next slide please, Randy. You'll see the flyer that we're circulating now to try to promote four dates um, in which folks can come out to join um, the police department, the DA's office, the county commissioners, and students um, from the Bristol Township School District to help paint the mural. And so it's over the course of those four days that we hope to complete the mural and we'll actually showcase it later on um, this year, September 17th on World Mural Day. Now, we're actually starting earlier this year. Generally, we start through the end of the summer and kind of wrap it up. We're actually starting earlier this year because we're gonna to try to squeeze to it um, prior to the September 17th date. So that's kind of a work in progress. But um, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the fact that as part of painting the mural, there's a lot of prep work that goes into it. And so you don't just like pick a location and start painting. I mean, you have to power wash, you have to prep. There's a, a paint base coat to seal, depending on what type of um, exterior you're working with. And so each year, we've had volunteers from the Painters Union, District Council 21, not only dedicate and pr um, provide free labor to um, prep the building in preparation for the mural itself, but supply the material. And this year is uh, a, an exterior that's a little unusual than the last two. It's gonna require a ton of material. Um, I think we're looking at 30 gallons in order to um, paint the mural this year. So this year, um, as you can see, it will be at 2505 Bath Road at the um, Bristol Township Municipal Complex. And the mural is actually going on the um, field house building that sits just to the right if you're facing um, the uh, municipal building there. And that's a building that's pretty, pretty highly visible because you get the traffic that cuts in and out of the, the complex itself. But then you have people that walk around the walking trail um, that just loop right around it. We're actually painting the mural on all, all four sides of that building. So last week we cleaned it. We're dodging raindrops this week. Um, we're hoping by the end of this week to have all the prep work and base paint coat finished, at which point we'll be able to roll right into the first date of May 12th to start um, the actual painting of the mural. So it's a cool project and I really have to tell you, of all the projects I'm involved with, whether it's a, a construction project on the project end of things or just the diversity and inclusion side of things, this program just touches me in a way in which it just warms my heart because when you're out there working hand in hand with law enforcement, elected officials, people are having candid conversations, joking, and you know, it's just a really good time. And then to be able to look back at the finished product and then look at a mural that's gonna be there forever, so long as um, it lasts that long. Um, one of the things I will close in saying is that um, the District Council 21 folks, so after the mural is complete, they come back at the end and then they'll provide like an anti-graffiti protection, just to keep anybody from tagging it, but um, that's about it. I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Uh, well, I don't know, any questions from board members? No, no yeah, well, questions. No, we really thank appreciate you. I appreciate all the effort and everything you've done, so really, thank you. Yeah. We get Pleasure. good feedback on this. Yeah. Excellent. <clears throat> yes, if there's any, if, if there is anyone out there listening, uh, maybe next year's uh, program could use a, a new, another location. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions are all suggestions are welcome. And then the last last uh, thing I will say is, is election day is May 16th. So and polls are open between at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Uh, make sure you get out there and vote. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. All right, we have a new solicitor for Bucks County. So Amy Fitzpatrick, uh, welcome. First off, thank you and. Uh, Solicitor support. Thank you, Commissioner. First, I'd like to thank the commissioners for the opportunity to continue to serve the county now as county solicitor. I have just one item to report for today's meeting. 
The board held its standing executive session yesterday with staff and legal counsel in order to discuss personnel matters as well as to receive confidential legal advice about both pending and prospective litigation. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Um, okay, public comments now. The list. Uh, Scott Bogan. Scott Vogan, Warrington Township. Uh, I'd like to know when the audits of the local tax collector is going to be done. There was a lot of complaints against Deborah Dixon, the tax collector for Warrington. And I think your auditors need to take that into consideration. A lot of false late fees and false liens. Second, in regards to Election Day, before you were the judges were appointed, Commissioner Marsegli gave me a completely defenseless position. I have been harassed, bullied, intimidated since 2015. First day on the job. Is now risen to disability, religion slurs. My constable has put his hand to my up to me, called me incompetent. His wife is saying I'm a baby in the election room. Ms. Fitzpatrick, you need to direct Dan Geister to get that guy out of my ward. He is literally telling my staff to ignore me. I've been on the phone with Tom Freitag, Kelly Gal, when it happens, it's got to stop. We're coming in the municipal elections, and that's when it's the worst. Mr. Gigeramo, you were pictured with a guy who says, I don't give a blank, you're getting mistreated. So you can't go calling the parties. You, the Board of Elections has to stop calling the parties and because the parties can't enforce themselves. That is a township supervisor that's saying that. The election code says, Ms. Patrick, the sheriff's is the law enforcement authority. Dan Geiser has to start thinking like that and start saying, oh, no, there's no, there's no question now in that ward. They want to start harassing him. We're not going to argue. Next thing you know, the sheriff will be down there. Tell Tom Freitag, just call the sheriff, send him down. Uniforms, you're not going to argue with the man because they argue with me every, under, every municipal election. It's the worst. We've had people just say, the face, the building, I'm teasing you. And if the party won't enforce themselves, someone has to. And it's ridiculous. If this is a private job, you would be running away from Commissioner Marseglia when she said there's nothing the county will do for these elections. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ed Matkowski. Ed Matkowski again. I'd like to compliment the idea of power of love. I think that's a good thing. We, we need to figure out what's good in everybody. There's, uh, everybody has disagreements, so we need to find a way to solve them. Um, there is a problem about merit, how we're dealing with merit. I understand that the president of Jefferson Hospital is being dismissed because he wasn't woke enough. He questioned some of the vaccines. I think there's uh, they thought that they could sell more Budweiser to the young people if they got a trans person doing it. I think things need to be decided on merit. Like at Central Bucks, they criticize against the LGBT community, but they're not against the LGBTQ community. They're against the billion-dollar transgender medical industry maiming and exploiting these children. Uh, they're not against gays. In fact, gays against grooming has a very good website. They're against a lot of this propaganda in the, this medical industry that takes advantage of innocent children and proposes things. There's no one solution to everything. I think that we got to do more communications and more groups. I, I think Planned Parenthood does some good, but there's a lot of suspicion that they're pushing abortions and they should be, uh, we, women should have a choice. The economy has deteriorated significantly because of we're no longer energy independent and the costs make it harder for families to take care of children. So I think women should have a choice. They should be able to give money to help women have babies and not have a life of regret because they 
were forced by economic circumstances to do uh, kill their babies. So Thank you. Christine Heitman. more information about what the reason for asking question well the reason to ask questions should be to sort of generally just learn more information about what your county government's doing uh, we do know obviously there are people who come to these meetings not with any intention of that they just like to you know uh, have some fun uh, when they're here and, and troll the commissioners I want the written re record to state that Robert Harvey jr. addressed Bucks County residents as trolls during the April 19th, 2023 County Commissioner's meeting. I also want the written record to state that I, Christine Heitman, sent an email to signinsheets.org. This is the site that we used to sign up to speak at the County Commissioner's meeting. On September 7th, 2022, I was the first person to sign up to speak Robert Harvey Jr. stated that the site went down. Somehow I ended up on the bottom of the list. Although I signed up for both segments, I wasn't allowed to speak during the second. I emailed signinsheets.org and asked if there was an outage. They said there was no outage. It's my understanding of the First Amendment that I have the right to address you, Robert. You, as an elected official, do not have the right to call me names or interfere with my ability to redress you. And since I have a few seconds left, Mr. Freitag, I think you might have misinterpreted the law. Um, it says two federal elections, and I believe that would be the um, presidential and the midterm elections. So if somebody hasn't voted in 20, 2021 and 2022, you can remove them. So have you guys started removing the people that we've shown you? Thank you. Shannon Harris. Shannon Harris, Buckingham. I'm here basically on, based on what you did uh, last uh, meeting, Commissioner Hari, um, and you just did it again to these people too. You, they brought up 5D, which is very concerning. I just literally went on uh, Google, found an article, it says EU 5D appeal, scientists warn of potential serious health. More than 180 scientists and doctors from 36 countries warn about the dangers of 5G. It's serious, it's not to be laughed at. You literally just laughed at someone who's bringing up concern. I find it very offensive. I'm tired of the derogatory attitude, the name calling and the facial expressions. We're all here living in this community together. And Commissioner DiGiromo, I don't ever see that from you. And I would just appreciate it if you would talk to your colleagues about their behavior. Because it's very unprofessional and it creates an atmosphere of intimidation and division. So regarding the pandemic, I would like to ask Commissioner Harvey and Marseglia where they received their medical licenses from. Why did you think that you had the authority to make public statements telling people to take an experimental vaccine and issuing an unconstitutional vaccine mandate on county employees as a condition of their employment? A public official has no business making medical recommendations or threaten an experimental non-FDA approved vaccine. Commissioner Harvey, during your meeting, you not only provide, did you provide any conformed consent when you told Bucks County residents to take the vaccine? No. And did the county physically provide any and all county employees with information on the risks, benefits, uh, side effects, and any other information when you installed the mandate that's required by law? Working in the safety arm of the pharmaceutical industry, I'm very familiar with the FDA process. Did you do, know that no safety studies were done? And usually the process takes 10 to 20 years to complete the FDA process. Furthermore, in the history of the FDA, no approved drug has ever, ever been kept on the market when over 50 deaths have occurred. The eight that were recalled were pulled immediately when, those, when that threshold was um, reached, 
and then they were um, recalled. The COVID vaccine hit 50 deaths on the first date. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Your time is up. Susan O'Neill. Hi, my name is Susan O'Neill. I live in Buckingham Township. First, I would like to thank the commissioners uh, for all the work that they do to make uh, Bucks County the great place uh, to live. I moved here five years ago and I've been very impressed with how things are run. Um, and I know in today's divisive climate, it's not easy to stay even handed and focused uh, on all of the citizens of Bucks County. Second, I'd like to commend the commissioners for the co-responders program. I understand that the program has now been implemented in 15 police departments across Bucks County, and it has helped our police um, help, uh, help the police make their resources used more effectively and it helps people with mental health issues get the help that they need when they need it. So I think it's a great program and I hope it continues and I think it can be a model for other counties in Pennsylvania. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Robert McLean. Robert McLean, Milford Township, Bucks County. Uh, the roles of government and citizens from a biblical perspective. I would like to share some points that are found in the New Testament book of Romans, chapter 13, which states, God, the creator, has ordained government. Whoever resists the government resists the ordinance of God. Government officials are ministers of God to citizens for their good. Government is not a terror to good, but to evil. When evil laws and regulations are called good, and good laws and regulations are called evil, citizens are required to reform the government and resist the evil forced upon them. Citizens are not to show unlimited submission to unjust laws and regulations. Thank you. Elizabeth Yaus. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, Ms. Yaus is not going to speak. Okay. Uh, Beth Curcio. Truth does not mind being questioned. A lie does not like, like being challenged. Weaponizing Bucks County against the citizens with taxpayer money, suing mothers, not giving them things to do, and using our money to sue them. You need to stop this case against Jamie. You need to refund their funds. You personally, not the taxpayer. Listen carefully to the Marxist words of Mr. Harvey uses to gaslight the taxpayers of Bucks County. Disinformation, conspiracy theories, election deniers, trolls, attack on our democracy. The last one, the African proverb. Joe Biden just said that our children are not ours. This is dangerous, people. This has nothing to do with Democrat, Republican. This is the uniparty. We are truly in biblical times where evil is revered as good, and good is punished. Right here in Bucks County, there's a war against women, family, and Christianity. Innocent children are being sexualized at two rainbow rooms now, in school libraries, on the internet. Sexualizing children is totally demonic. It confuses them, stresses them, and they live in fear. And these commissioners had them masked, and they were scared to death. 
So these are the people that are asking for your vote. They are being, <clears throat> they are being taken from their parents by groomers in schools. Ask yourself, why does the transgender want your children? Because they're pedophiles and they can't have their own. Imagine a husband and a father chooses to attend a drag show uh, with, his family, with his fellow Democrat commissioner, and they know they're minors in the rooms. These people are making decisions, uh, spending hard-earned dollars, scary. We all have a Borku. How does that make you feel? They can track and trace us. Thank you. Jamie Walker. Hi. Megan and I have been coming to these meetings for almost two years now to find out who changed the COVID health guidance for 80,000 children. This illegal, oh, is this, this illegal health guidance told schools that it was okay to keep kids out of school. This guidance went against what our health director wanted and it hurt children. Instead of being truthful to us, Commissioner Marsaglia lied to the entire community. She tried to defame Megan and myself. We filed right to know requests to try to seek the documents to find out how the guidance was made. The state granted us the documents. Instead of releasing the documents, Joe Kahn told them to sue us, sue mothers. They said that was the right thing to do. He's gone now. That happens a lot in Bucks County when people get caught lying. So just that in mind. Um, I have a hearing next month. I'm going to invite everybody to it. My hearing for the right to know request. Please come. It will be at the Justice Center across the street. Um, a few days ago, Megan, and, Megan had a hearing. The county brought three attorneys to try to hide the documents to show how the health guidance was made. You guys lost. You guys have to turn over, you have to turn over most of the documents, and the judge sa sanctioned the county $3,000 for acting in bad faith, because you acted in bad faith. You lied the, to the community, you tried to defame us, you bullied us, luckily we're not, we're not really impacted by bullies. You changed health guidance, and most importantly, you hurt children by doing this. You are unfit to lead our county. Thank you. It's funny, right? Stephanie Weiser. Hi, my name is Stephanie Weiser. I'm from Buckingham Township. And first, I want to thank you, commissioners, for the job that you're doing. I think you're doing a wonderful job, and you have the best interests of the, uh, the people who live in our county, families, children, the senior citizens, our diverse, very diverse group of people that we have living here. I also want to thank you and say that I will be voting for you for re-election uh, in May and also in November. So thank you for running again, because it's not an easy thing to do to run um, in an elected office. There are a lot of uh, negative things that happen that are focused towards you, and it's hard to sort of get through that and maintain a good attitude towards the general population, as I'm finding, as I'm a candidate. But, and then I'd like to thank you for the website that you have set up for the Bucks County, uh, the commissioner's website. So it's very informative, and I went on there and looked at your Parks and Rec Recreation tab, and you have a newsletter there that if you scan it with your phone, you actually get the newsletter, and it has all of the activities that are going to be going on in spring and summer and fall, and they're wonderful because we live in a beautiful community, and you have a lot of wonderful things going on, and so I want to thank you. I assume you promote that um, as commissioners, and um, I look forward to exploring Buckingham and Bucks County even more having access to those activities that are listed on the website. And I encourage everyone to take a look and see what's there. There's a lot going on this summer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Purcell Linden.
Priscilla Linden, Upper Makefield. I'd like to respond to a comment made earlier in the meeting about taking care of children. When my children were baptized, I received literature from my church emphasizing that my child was entrusted to me to care for, to love, and to nurture on loan from God. He and she were not my personal possessions. Unfortunately, not every child is in a home that practices this conditional status. When children are mistreated where they live, whether with family or otherwise, they become the responsibility of the county and the state. I disagree that money would be better spent on other matters. Who would take care of these innocent children left to their own devices? As a previous public commenter, commenter advised, we are that village that cares for and helps to raise such children. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Megan Brock. Okay, can you hear me or no? In August 2021, Dr. Damsker issued school guidance that was going to give our kids the normal school year they needed. Days before the start of school, it was abruptly changed. I came here and asked you why this happened. You still have not answered my question. Instead, for almost two years, you've utilized your power as government officials to abuse, harass, and bully me. You have repeatedly called me a conspiracy theorist, you wrongfully blocked my phone number, you made a defamatory statement about me in the newspaper, and used Bucks County tax dollars to file five frivolous lawsuits against me to keep public records hidden. On Friday, the court ruled on two of those cases. In that ruling, they ordered you to produce requested wet records within 10 days and also found that you acted in bad faith, awarding me a civil penalty in the maximum amount, something that's only happened a handful of times under Pennsylvania right to no law. This is an acknowledgement that the county acted wrongly. It's a reminder that the government cannot weaponize itself against its constituents without consequence. I was put in the unfair position of spending thousands of dollars on legal fees or facing five lawsuits without legal counsel, while the county has access to millions of tax dollars and an entire legal department. I am so thankful that Judicial Watch stepped in on my behalf to make this a fair fight and protect government transparency. I cannot adequately express my gratitude to Judicial Watch. Our kids have been thrown into crisis due to the harsh COVID-19 lockdowns and prolonged school closures. They deserve answers as to why and how these decisions were made so that we can do better and learn from the mistakes of the past. We the people still have a voice. We are blessed to live in a country where our citizenship grants us the opportunity to peacefully demand accountability from our, granted, from our government. And may we never take this for granted. May we be willing to sacrifice our own comforts and energy to preserve freedom and liberty for the next generation at every level, from federal to local. Thank you. Andy Warren. Thank you. I, I'm not sure whether you can answer this today or at some point, just some clarity. Um, and I'm legitimately asking a question. <clears throat> For the longest time, I thought that if you didn't vote for in two presidential elections, you were withdrawn, your name was withdrawn. Um, today, I heard that the process is a five-year process that has a number of steps, and I'm not sure then it said, and then I thought I heard in two federal elections. So are we talking about, in my case, Two presidential elections would be four years. In this other case, it's five years plus four years for nine years before voter's name is taken off. And then one of the speakers today mentioned an interesting point, which I had not considered, was that a presidential election and in, in two years 
a congressional election are both federal elections. So what would is the number? Um, is it four years, nine years, two years? At some point, could somebody just put a number to what it is? Thank you. Sure. Lori Katz. As part of this election cycle, I have been door knocking and have had some interesting findings to share. The majority of people are moderate in their beliefs and have the same concerns no matter what the political party. People want a solid school education that focuses on academics, not social issues. Citizens appreciate that our Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority is publicly owned by us still and not a private entity. We want it to remain that way. People have noticed an uptick in crimes. My neighborhood has experienced car thefts, break-ins, and mail being stolen directly from people's mailboxes. Check your police blotters, too. Maybe it's time for neighbors to get together and organize a town watch for your neighborhoods. If you are waiting for elected officials to come to your aid, don't hold your breath. It just came to my attention that House Bill 300 was fast-tracked and has passed in the PA House of Reps this week. This will go to the PA Senate for a vote. This bill will make it impossible to restrict access for biological males who identify as females. They will have full access to female-only safe spaces without question. Go online and read the bill. As a biological woman, this should alarm you. This allows men who identify as women access to female bathrooms, showers, and shelters that, mothers with, that house mothers with children, etc. I'd like to hear how our commissioners feel about their daughters and granddaughters showering next to a biological male stranger or being in a bathroom stall next to a male. Doesn't it open the opportunity for opportunistic male predators? Just as a just, it's just as difficult to vet the minor attracted pedophiles that attend events in our Bucks County rainbow rooms. Unfortunately, this is our reality when we elect radicals that masquerade as moderates. It is very difficult to get them out of office once they're in. People have lost faith in our election system and our officials seem to work. Okay, thank you, Ms. Katz. Thank you, Ms. Katz. Ms. Katz. So I got it. I got it. Ms. Katz, sit down, please. Thank you. Excuse me. No screaming from the back, please. Try to maintain some decorum if you can. Vanna Darmond. Mr. Harvey, regarding the minutes, um, you should be posting the draft minutes. Because you're asking people over the dais, you're, the other commissioners, does anybody have any questions? You could deliberate those minutes. You must post the draft minutes so that we can see them, so we can see what questions might occur. Then when they get approved, voted on, you have the approved minutes. That's how it works. Um, I would like to know how much money you have spent uh, of our tax money. Uh, to prevent government emails from being released due to suing local moms in an attempt to make our government less transparent. You sued Jamie Walker and Megan Brock, and even though the Office of Open Records awarded them emails they requested lawfully through the Right to Know request, you say you are more transparent because you stream these meetings, yet you intentionally hide government business. Why? We the people elected you, and we are responsible for holding you accountable. And we have laws in our commonwealth to do that. You are attempting to abuse and misuse our tax dollars to circumvent that process. And more than that, to set case uh, precedent to make all of PA less pr uh, transparent. Fortunately, Judge Bowman delivered a lawful and just ruling in favor of Megan Brock, and you are ordered to provide the emails she requested. More than that, you acted in bad faith, and you are ordered to pay $3,000. I respectfully request that you drop the remaining lawsuits uh, of Megan, three of them, and the ones against Jamie Walker as well, and save that money for useful things to help our community. What Megan and Jamie have done represents all of us, and um, 
Any one of us should be able to request the emails and be awarded them under the law. I ask that you apologize to Megan and Jamie and to all the taxpayers of Bucks County for misusing our money to pursue these frivolous lawsuits. You also owe Megan Brock an apology for blocking her from all county services over absolutely nothing. She called twice and left a message that was respectful. She played it. And I just recently read an article in the patch of somebody who just, who really harassed and is getting prosecuted. Also, Bob Harvey, it's awful. Just, sorry, just clarifying the, um, Mr. Warren asked about the voting. Mr. Freitag, I know you're still here, so sorry. It, I know it's complicated, so we'll kind of go through the process again of how someone gets removed from the ballots. Just the, kind of, yeah, just the, the Cliff Notes version. It can take up to that entire nine-year period. So basically, I have to. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry, Mr. Warren. There's a lot of people making noise so, in the back. Just a commission shall send a notice pursuant to subsection, subsection D to any registered elector who has not voted nor appeared to vote during the period beginning five years before the date of the notice and ending on the date of the notice, and for whom the Board of Elections did not during that period in any other way receive any information that the elector still resides in that election district. So we send the notice to somebody who hasn't voted in five years, but also hasn't made any changes. So if you haven't voted in five years, but you changed your party a, a year ago, you don't get the notice because within five years you've- There's been some activity. There's been some activity. Right. Okay. A commission shall mark an I on the registration records of each registered elector who has been mailed a form under this section and has failed to respond, which shall be included in all other registration records for that polling site. That's the inactive. They get listed as inactive in the poll book, an I next to their name. Okay. So if they do go to the polls and vote, they fill out that affirmation, and then they are active again. A commission shall not cancel the registration of a registered elector on the grounds that the registered elector has changed residence unless any of the following apply. The registered elector, this is the section on this, has not voted nor appeared to vote and if necessary, correct the commission's record of the elector's address in an election during the period beginning on the date of the notice and ending on the day after the date of the second general election for federal office that occurs after the date of that notice. That's four years after. So if they get the five-year notice, don't respond to it, get, they get listed as inactive. If during the next four years, don't make any changes to the record, don't go and vote, then they will be canceled. Okay. So it's basically, essentially, it's a nine-year process. A nine-year process if you don't respond to anything that we send you. Okay. All right. Thank you. And that's state law, as you said, right? That is state law. Thank but you. But it's also uh, in compliance with the National Voter Registration Act. Which is a federal law. Correct. All right. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Moving to Commissioner Comments. Uh, Commissioner Marcegui. Um, just a quick thing on all the COVID stuff. This is just to say it was 100% all three commissioners and all of our advisors who were together on all. I'll say that again because I didn't have my mic on. Just regarding the COVID um, comments, it was all three commissioners, 100%, along with our staff, 100% on all decisions we made. Um, the other thing I want to say is that when it was pouring out rain on Sunday, we did have 325 people attend the Hold On You Matter Walk to prevent suicide. And I want to thank everybody that worked in the pouring rain, General Services for setting up a tent that we had some protection, and our mental health department for having the staff there and the suicide task force. Um, it, it was heartwarming to have so many people show up on such a difficult day. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner DiGiralba. Just want to give a quick shout out. Uh, I attended three events the last couple weeks uh, and where the county was involved. And uh, the one was the drug take back program on uh, August 22nd, I believe, where we had 38 locations. And I, I know a lot of unused uh, medications were turned in. And I just want to give a shout out to the Drug and Alcohol Commission and Diane Rossetti for doing that. I believe they're now over 200,000 pounds of little pills that they've collected since they started doing that. And, if, and I think I got this right, 2,000 pounds to a ton, so that's 100 tons 
of medication that has been taken, not off the streets, but out of medicine cabinets and out of homes that might have got into the wrong hands. Uh, and this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, where the weather was a big challenge for two outside events, uh, Earth Day, which was at Core Creek Park, and I know I saw Angela there, and George, thank you. Uh, we were involved in it. It was a really nice event. And Angela, how many trees did you we actually plant that day? You said 140, 145 trees that were planted that day. Uh, and again, the weather wasn't real great, but we had a nice crowd that was there. And then on uh, Sunday, we had the the walk, uh, the raise awareness of suicide and suicide prevention was, was at the Bucks County uh, Tech School. And a lot of people showed up. A lot of people showed up in rain gear for the walk, and they still got drenched. I mean, I, I want to give them a lot of credit for participating in that walk. Uh, and that was uh, Rachel, our Department of Human Services, and, uh, and Donna Duffy Bell was there. and. Uh, just, it was very, very inspiring that, especially that the walk for suicide prevention, very inspiring to see the people that participated. So I just want to give a shout out to everybody in the county that was involved for a terrific job done on all three events. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, just I echo the, the thanks. Um, there was a commenter earlier, talked about the Park and Rec Board and the newsletter that's out and, and how you can see it on your phone. So thank you, Angie Nagel, for all the work you've been doing as Park and Rec Director over these almost two years, right? Almost two years? Yeah, almost two years. Um, looking forward to the comprehensive plan and, and moving things along. So thank you for that. The, um, just on our consent agenda, a few things we've done today uh, in terms of business for the county, about $40,000 for agricultural preservation. $110,000 for uh, behavioral health development or programs, uh, about $370,000 for children uh, here who, who uh, are in need of foster care uh, through children and youth, um, about $400,000 to help uh, people, who, those who are homeless in Bucks County. Um, we do know that's it's an issue. Um, you know, housing we know is a problem in this county, affordable, attainable housing is a problem in this county. Um, we thank all the agencies and nonprofits who work with homelessness on the, every single day, including our housing community development, our human services, uh, and others. Um, the point in time count from earlier this year did show a, a decrease, which was nice, uh, but still, you know, I think we can all agree that, that um, you know, having any homelessness, any person who doesn't have a place to put their head down uh, where it's warm and safe is, is a problem uh, for, the, for the country, not just for Bucks County. Um, 325,000 for uh, information technology, about $58,000 to provide uh, equipment to keep um, those who are in the Chamonix Manor safe when they're being cared for by our staff there, and over $200,000 in park and rec, and $8.8 million coming into the county uh, in revenue and state and federal grants. So 8.8 .8 coming in uh, is going to be helpful to, to making sure we can do the job we need to do. The um, Comment made about, um, there has been, I know there's been some, some notice about this, things in the paper about uh, in a, a crime spree that is happening, uh, in specifically focused on people who are putting their mail in the mailboxes then putting their flag up. Uh, and what it's end up happening if you're paying, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're paying a check, uh, sending a check somewhere, it could be a utility bill, it could be, you know, a birthday card to somebody and you've got you know, a $50 check in there. Um, you know, there are people who are going around seeing those flags up and taking things out of the mailboxes and they're able to sort of take those checks and, and in some way, shape or form that I don't understand, they're able to actually cash that money. So there is, uh, there was recently an arrest, I think I read it in the, uh, in the intel, uh, recently an arrest of a few people and they found quite a few um, you know, um, pieces of mail, not just from Bucks, from Monco. So it is uh, you know, something to be aware of, uh, if possible. I know some people still don't like to pay things online, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, especially generationally speaking, uh, you know, it's, it is you know, pretty safe to pay stuff online if you have to pay your bills online. Or if you can, just take it yourself. Or if you see your mailman coming, to walk it out and hand it to them directly if, if you're concerned about that. Uh, in terms of town watches, town watches are a great idea. Obviously, they have to work through their police departments. If you're interested in helping your community in any way, being a foster parent, helping the homeless, uh, doing the, helping the letter carriers with the uh, stamp out hunger uh, on the 13th. Um, if you want to do town watch and help out when you're police, you know, those are all great things. That's what makes a community, that's what makes us a village, quite frankly. Uh, so that's, uh, that's something we certainly encourage all of us. Um, 
did want to, again, point out Stamp Out Hunger on the 13th uh, of May. Uh, remind you to put out food and uh, you know, non-perishable food items by your post, by your mailbox, so the uh, letter carriers, as they come around, can take those and they can get to food banks in Bucks County. And finally, as this is the last uh, meeting f uh, for, you know, until after Mother's Day, I want to wish a very happy Mother's Day to all the moms who are here in the room and the, and the some newly minted, rough, roughly newly minted grandmas who are in the room. Uh, you know, congratulations and I uh, hope you enjoy that time uh, with your family and for all the moms in Bucks County, grandmoms, foster moms, stepmoms, uh, you know, anybody who's serving in that role. Thank you so much for what you do uh, and hope you have a, a wonderful day. I hope it's sunny, I hope it's warm, and I hope you get to do whatever you want. And if it's nothing, and do nothing and, 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 and enjoy it. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.